afternoon, this is Emily Skelling. I'm with Katura Video. And today's session is entitled Teaching with Smart Video in Haiku, featuring the Learning Engine. I'll go ahead and just start my slideshow right away. This is projected to only last about 15, 20 minutes, so um, we'll just dive right in. Um, today's agenda, basically I'm just going to be going over some quick video and education statistics that I found, video at a glance in education. Um, I'll be going over a demonstration of the learning engine itself within Haiku, and then also some to-dos for you. Um, towards the end of the session, I'll give you some action items that you might want to consider. And then I'll also answer, answer any questions that come up during the presentations in the Q&A session. Um, so if you have any questions, just go ahead and enter those in, and I'll address those at the end. Okay, so some information I found um, in my quest for information on video and education, some trends and statistics, are, you know, there are several buzzwords. Now, depending on whether you're in higher education or K through 12, these may be more, these may resonate with you more. So flipped classrooms are growing in K through 12. There's no question about that. Blended learning as well, which is just basically using video in some capacity in your curriculum. And then lecture capture is quite common for higher education. And so is media a media library or having a repository for all of your school's videos. So to the right here, you see several different um, statistics that I have listed. But the most compelling one that I want to draw your atten attention to is the last one, where it says, a third of students are accessing video online through their own initiative to help with their homework. And to me, this was just so telling because whether you as a faculty member are using video uh, within your classroom, students are still accessing it. So it's the way of today as well as the way of the future. So some reasons why simply using a video may not be enough um, are as follows. So again, in my quest for information, I found that the attention span of students between higher education and K through 12 was anywhere from three to 15 minutes. Now that was determined based on, you know, how long a, a specific lesson was, what point the lesson these, the, the attention span was gauged, as well as the age. So with the average lecture or lesson being anywhere from 50 to 90 minutes, those frequent drops in attention spans lead to less engagement and less um, information retention. And with online learners, uh, the online student only expects to watch an average of five minutes per video. So even if your lesson is wonderful, it's 30 minutes long, best you've ever done, chances are they're not watching the whole thing um, and only expect to watch about five minutes of it. And so that's why having concepts um, are key. So having your video with you know, whether you're creating small or shorter videos or just at least having them based upon concept. The video has to be smart and intentional. And by smart, you'll see what I mean in a moment whenever I show you some of the learning engine features. And the tools to accomplish this have to be simple. So the, here's where I'm just going to jump right into the learning engine. I'll go over the video gallery search and discover. I'll go over our interactive video player and how to build your video library, as well as how to add in some of the enrichment features that you'll see in the interactive video player. Okay, so jumping right over. Okay, here I have, um, you can see this is a, my Haiku learning, learning management system, and I have a course that I created called American History 19th Century. And so you see the learning engine just um, added right in there, and this is a media library for your course. So you can have this in all your courses on campus, you can have it in one course, five courses, but this is specifically for each course. And this really drives home the academic experience of the Learning Engine in that um, if you have you know, a YouTube video that you wanted to share, normally you would probably embed it somewhere or send it to them. They're taken to the YouTube site where there's irrelevant videos that pop up, maybe advertisements, but they're taken out of that academic experience. So um, this really keeps them in the classroom, whether they are, you know, solely online learners or if they're just doing homework for um, your class. So this is a media gallery that's holding um, Vimeo and YouTube videos. So those are the two different um, hosting platforms that we work with, Vimeo and YouTube. And really depending upon, you know, how many videos you want, the number you can have in here is endless. So um, YouTube is free, as you know. Uh, Vimeo Pro is very, very low cost. It starts at $200 a year. 
and um, that gets you some pretty substantial storage. So, you know, we're not charging, you know, a nickel and dime, nickel and diming you for storing and playing back your videos. It's all um, very, very low cost. So some of these videos I've created, some of them are public videos that I wanted to include within my course to, um, you know, support the things that I'm teaching. There may be a really great PBS documentary that, you know, teaches about, you know, Abraham Lincoln and the Gettysburg Address uh, perfectly. So you can easily use those videos and import them using some of our tools. So just um, showing you, you know, some of the capable, uh, features within the gallery itself, the main gallery, is we have searching capabilities. So let's just type in the word Google. This is your standard search bar, and it yields three results. So what this text is searching is not only the title of the video, but it's also searching any kind of data around the video. So that could be a chapter or a note that you created using our tools, or it could be a transcription that somebody uploaded. I know for a fact this is a public uh, video that Stanford Business put out, and whoever uploaded it also uploaded a professional transcription. And so we have the ability to actually search that spoken word within the learning engine. And that's huge because you can't do that on YouTube. You can't do that on Vimeo. You can't um, search anything outside of a title. So um, this gives you very, very deep searching capabilities. So now students can go directly to the video that they need and directly to the point in time of the video that they need. So um, let's just pull up one of the videos that um, was uh, that came up with the Google search. And um, this is a video I created using um, one of our capturing agents. Um, and you can see this is hosted on YouTube here. And what this is going to search now is, um, well, let's just see what it searches. So if I type in the word Google, I have four transcription results that came up. So this is searching anything, anytime that I spoke Google, it's allowing me to go directly to that point in time of the video. So you can see it took me right to that point in time of the video. It's super, super powerful. And so there's a couple of methods of getting transcriptions. So YouTube has free automated captions um, that you can allow your videos to have. There's a couple tricks to it. I mean, they're about 50% accurate, but you can easily edit those. Um, and you can actually get to that editing interface from the learning engine in our editing area. And um, we have pretty deep YouTube control, so I'll show you that to you in just a sec. Uh, but just scrolling over here on the little card, um, you can see some chapters and notes. So these are all things that I just manually created within the learning engine. And chapters or bookmarks or concepts, whatever you want to call them, are used for faculty to break up their video into, you know, subject matter. So you wouldn't necessarily have long form text. It would be concept A, importing, concept B, curating. And so all of that is searchable as well. And now um, you can have a very long video and your student can still you know maintain that five minute watching capability and only watch the point of the video that's relevant to them. Notes are really useful for um, notifying your students if you're, they're going to be having a quiz and over what part of the video they need to study up on for driving live discussions and letting them know they need to be prepared with their own you know defense on a particular subject matter or notifying them of an essay. Another great use case is, you know, let's say this was a video you created last year and the content may have been may have been updated or needs to be updated. And you could easily create a note letting the student know, hey, you know, this is actually outdated. You know, now this is the more up to date material without having to recreate the video that you had already done. Um, just so you know, you can print these off if you want to. Students can, you know, take their own little notes. You can resize the text if that's something you'd like to do. Um, this is the entire transcription of the video, so um, you can print that off as well if for some reason you'd like to do that. Um, but just to also quickly show you, um, you know, you see the, right here you can barely see it, but this is a title that I actually used using um, the free YouTube editing tool. So I'll show those to you in a sec, but they have some really cool free annotator tools as well as editing tools that will transfer over into the learning engine. Because again, you know, we're not hosting the video, YouTube is. And so those changes you make on there will be um, seen within the learning engine in real time. Okay. So let me show you how easy it is to actually build your media library. So um, clicking on new will allow you to do a number of things. So collection is 
what you see here, these folders that have, you know, any number of videos um, categorized under them. You can have them. You could, you know, not use collections. It's really up to you, but it just allows you to organize your media um, into subject and, you know, really cool use case would be to create a final exam study material folder and put any videos that would be um, relevant to the final exam on there. So now a student can go directly to the videos they need to study. They can go directly to the point in time that you want them to study so that they can be prepared accordingly. So that's huge for reducing learning gaps and getting students engaged and um, really enrich their learning experience. Okay, so um, we have a couple of importer tools. This first one here is the YouTube importer. And so you can see I'm using Google Single Sign-On. And I manage a number of different Gmail accounts, but I'm just going to pick this one for demonstration's sake. And, and, you know, if you have a Google Apps for Education, you know, with your school, you could use that or even your personal one. So we've given you the ability to import uh, videos from YouTube. So any video you've ever liked, uploaded, watched, or marked for watching later can be easily brought in. So let me just click on this one. I'm notified it's been successful, and you see it down here at the bottom. A very, very similar workflow is done with our Vimeo importer. And so you would just need, um, you know, your organization's Vimeo account information. And, you know, they're set up a little bit different than YouTube in that they don't have the different categories that YouTube does with liked and uploaded. So we've given you the ability to search uh, within the entire um, organization's account. And so, again, just a click and import. You can see it's down here at the bottom. The other way to get media in here is to create your own. So this is our CaptureCast Chrome app up here at the top right-hand corner. You can see it's an extension on Chrome. It um, will work on um, Chromebooks, you know, really any Chrome browser um, or machine that, you know, supports Chrome. And this will be available for you to download for free in the Chrome store in a couple weeks. Um, at, at the end of this week or possibly mid next week, it'll be available for you to, you know, just download once you are sent the file from me, like if you get a trial going or something like that. But what you can do is um, do a webcam or screen recording. Um, whenever you have, this will be available to you, it'll actually be picture in picture. So you can do the webcam and screen recording if that's something you'd like to do. But you would just click record. You can choose your resolution. Um, if you have existing media that you've created before using a different software, um, you can easily upload that. And so we're not limited on the type of file you can upload outside of what YouTube and Vimeo can ingest. So if they can ingest that file type, we can upload it for you. Okay? Um, so that about covers how you get video in there. Now let's take a look at how easy it is to enrich your videos. I'm just going to click on Manage. And in order to edit a video, um, you would just click on one video. Let's click on this uh, Google Summit one that I was looking at earlier. You just click on Edit. And um, you're taken to this little editing screen. Now, whether you want to create a chapter or a note, the workflow is the same. It's hover and click. And so now it's got that little timestamp. And if it's a chapter, you want to give it a title, like, you know, or a bookmark, however it is that you use videos or whatever terminology you like, um, you just give it, you know, a title there. Now, if it's a note, um, you can do the hover and click again, give it a quick title of what this note is about, and then give it some good content. You know, you could, if you saw a Wikipedia article, you know, that supported what it was that you were sharing about, or if you just verbally referenced it, you could easily pull that link over and the content from that Wikipedia article and just paste it here so that students don't actually have to go to Wikipedia now. They can just look at your note. So um, you can also change the title of the video. You know, this is pulling from whatever's on Vimeo or YouTube, but you can easily change the title, add in some tags. So if this video is about, you know, photosynthesis, I recommend tagging it as well as, if you know, there's a quiz associated with it. Um, just tag it with quiz. And so now a student can search for quiz in the main media gallery. Any videos that ever had a quiz associated with it would come up. It just allows for them to better prepare. So these are the YouTube controls that we have integrated with the learning engine. And what these allow you to do is actually go to that specific video on your channel that uh, for, for this thing that you're wanting to edit.
So subtitles and captions is where you would go to edit the captions. Um, you can see if I just click on the English automated, you can easily just click on edit, you know, change whatever words were, you know, botched up and then publish the edits once you're done. Um, annotations is where you would add in like titles or speech bubbles or highlights and spotlights. Um, you can actually even link to other videos if that's something you want to do. Analytics will give you analytics for that video. So how many times it was watched, um, estimated minutes watched, etc. General info allows you to change the privacy setting. So we recommend an unlisted setting for uh, YouTube just because your video won't appear on the main YouTube index. Um, but it still allows you to take um, advantage of you know, the, the speech to text searching um, that you wouldn't get um, if you use like a private setting. And lastly, enhancements is um, where editing your video comes into play. So you can actually trim your video on YouTube. Um, you can, you know, edit the or fix the lighting, add in some filters. You know, if you want to blur the faces within the video, if you have students that are um, in here, it can blur all the faces. <laughs> um, you can also add in some audio tracks. So some really great free YouTube uh, controls that we have deeply integrated within the learning engine. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. The last thing I want to show you is sharing media. So if you teach multiple courses that you want to share these videos with, it's very, very simple. You just click on, you know, manage the video that you're wanting to share. And whichever courses that you are a faculty member of will, you know, come up for you to be able to um, share. And for some reason, these aren't coming up. But Okay. Well, you can see I've shared this with multiple courses that I teach. So you can also specify if you want this video publicly visible by your students or not. So if you, um, you know, have a whole bunch of videos you reuse semester to semester and you want um, it to be, you know, scaled out, you could just make them all invisible and just scale them out as you'd like. Okay, so um, the last thing I'll show you is quickly how to organize your media. So if you want to add this video into one of these categories, you could easily do that. And that about covers the learning engine. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it sits right within your course. Um, we've tried to replicate what's intuitive and amazing about YouTube and Vimeo, which is, you know, the videos can be played back on any device. Um, everybody knows about, you know, YouTube at the very least. It's a very familiar experience. And we've enhanced the things that they aren't so great at. So the interactivity, as well as, um, you know, the ability for you to control what your students are saying. So let me just jump back into my presentation here and um, wrap this up. So there's the three pre-qualifiers for using the learning engine. And one of them is to obviously have Haiku or an LTI compliant LMS such as Haiku. Um, <clears throat> in order to use the YouTube importer, you would need um, a Google account. So um, if your school has Google Apps for Education, that's perfect. Um, if not, if you have a personal Gmail account, um, you could easily use your own personal YouTube account. And then, again, using uh, YouTube or Vimeo for uh, hosting the video. So hopefully you've loved what you've seen and you want to know what all you get. So every single learning, account, uh, learning engine account comes with the following. Unlimited online ticketing support, um, including access to our support documentation. Um, we have biweekly tutorials on tools as well as webinars on um, the learning engine as a whole. So if you have um, faculty that are just now getting on board, maybe you've had it integrated for a semester, but there's still some stragglers, you could e easily direct them to us and we can get them educated. Um, you get all captured import tools, all management and enrichment tools, the LMS integration that you've seen, unlimited course enablement, faculty and students can use it, maintenance updates, uh, again, bi-weekly training on tools, and then an onboarding training staff, um, like a, a direct onboarding training of your tech staff for about two hours. So we have pricing based on K-12 through and higher education, and K-12 through is based on school or district. So um, it's very, very inexpensive um, 
especially compared to other platforms out there. But, you know, I can tell you K through 12, it starts at $500 a, a, a year for a school and district pricing goes down from there. Higher education pricing, um, you know, I, it, I would I encourage you to reach out to me for pricing on that. Um, it's not the same or quite the same as um, K through 12, but it is the same in that we don't charge for full time enrollment or anything like that. So really, really drives down the cost for media management. So some optional add ons you can add are support incident packages that will give you the same day four hour response time to phone support to a dedica dedicated support engineer. Um, all the learning engine instances come with unlimited online ticketing support that I mentioned with a two-day turnaround time. Um, we also offer training and consulting packages. If you're new to using video within your school or classroom, we can you know, assist you in um, just some consulting services. So if that's of interest to you, you can email me at emilycaturavideo.com. We do offer free pilots for schools, districts, and universities, and community colleges, obviously. Um, and so with the summertime approaching, it's a huge time for pilots. So um, the quicker, the better in getting it set up and getting your focus group or whoever it is that's going to be testing it out ready. Um, also, follow us at Google Plus at Katura Video Solutions. We post all of our videos, updates, enhance, and enhancements, and announcements on that Google Plus page. And then lastly, whenever the CaptureCast Chrome app comes out this month in the Chrome Store, I encourage you to download it, use it, rate it, and give us feedback. Um, currently, right now, it's faster than any other Chrome app out there, and um, the quality is much, much more pristine. So we're really, really excited to get it in y'all's hands. Um, and that would be free for anybody to download, faculty, students, anybody, whether you use the learning engine or not. I mean, obviously, we'd love for you to do that, but it's going to be a free Chrome app 